All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, <laughs> now that we see how things can and will look uh, with static and non-static sources and the effect of the retarded time and things of that nature, what is it to be when um, we actually have something moving like a point charge? And in this particular question, we will get our first uh, involvement of the effects of movement and uh, how we deal with things. Uh, we'll have to be very careful um, because there's a lot of background, which again, I'll type in the descriptions. But um, be very, very aware that moving objects have different effects on our interpretation of them. So let's go ahead and dive in. For this statement, we have a particle of charge Q moves in a circle of radius A at a constant angular velocity omega. Okay, so let's assume that the circle lies in the xy plane centered at the origin. Pretty easy thing to work with in my opinion. And at time t equals zero, the charge is at A and at the coordinate A zero on the positive x axis. Okay. Find the Leonard and Veshuk potential. I'm pretty sure that's a German name, um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Veshuk potential for points on the z-axis. Okay. I might have to look up how to say these names. So the, uh, for shorthand, LW potentials are VR of t is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, QC, Okay, again, we're moving. We have to be very careful how we deal with things. Over, and instead of script R, we have script R times C minus script R vector dotted with the velocity. Okay, similarly here, we have AR takes a similar form. In fact, it's so similar that we have uh, a way to write AR in terms of the scalar potential, which is V over C squared times the scalar potential. Clearly, uh, we know that the retarded time is from last time we dealt with this thing, um, or the last time we dealt with uh, anything moving, so it was T minus script R over C. Now we kind of rewrite it in terms of a uh, retarded uh, position function. In this particular case, script R goes to R minus W of T of R, which is the uh, position of Q at some time T, okay? That's what we're working with. Instead of, a, instead of a strict distance, it's a function of time. But again, we had script R over C is equal to, uh, TR was equal to T minus script R over C. So if we isolate um, script R, we add the script R over C over minus the TR multiplied by C. So it's the same equation, just written in a different way with the uh, W function. All right, so we have everything we need. Now we just actually have to put it to use. So what I would suggest is at time t, we can parameterize the path that the charge is taking, which in this case, a circle in the xy plane is pretty easy to do. So we know that a uh, in the xy plane, we have a cosine and a sine. Again, for the fact that we're dealing in uh, three-dimensional space, uh, Z component here just goes to zero. Again, I'm not using time average with these angle brackets. These are vector brackets. Uh, our radius is A, so we just plug in that. Notice that it's a scalar, so we can factor that out. And with any circle that is time dependent, we have a radial uh, velocity, omega, times T, and that'll give us the angle we want. So we're good to go with that parameterization. Easy to deal with, good enough. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of this parameterization so that we can find the, this would be the velocity in this case. Here, once we do that, we see that we just get a factor of omega that pops out. Thank you, sine and cosine. Now the sine, now the x component is negative and the y component is still positive. No big deal. Now from this, we can find a retarded position. So note that the script R is the, the retarded position. Uh, so note here that if we want to feel at some point in space, right, um, 
we notice that we just want it somewhere, but we left where the particle is moving in the xy plane. So we want to find a potential on the z axis. So here, script R, where we're looking, the field point is at z, and we need a minus the uh, position function that we found, which was a cosine omega tr sine omega tr. So if we take the difference here, now we just have a couple of negative signs and we see that our script R vector is such. All right, if we were to take the square of this, well, you take the square component of everything, pretty easy to deal with. The sine squared cosine squared goes to just a squared. We've seen that a thousand times. So we know that the magnitude of script R is equal to z squared plus a squared, good to go. Clearly then our script R hat vector is the vector divided by the magnitude and that's what we see in the next step. All right, however, with the background work now done, we can also take the dot products and we see that the potential and that we see in the potential formulations. So C over script R C minus uh, vector R dot V, okay? Well, let's go ahead and uh, put some things in. What we see is that we can factor this uh, uh, script R C out of both of them. Okay, and so uh, in this simplification, the C's cancel, and what we're left with is 1 over script R times 1 minus script R hat dot V over C. And this, uh, uh, this simplification is actually what is going to be used quite a bit in uh, other parts of the chapter and in the chapter 11. So let's get used to working with this particular setup here. So what we need to know is what is script R dotted with V? Okay, easy enough. Um, we took the derivative earlier, so we have that. We found the script R uh, hat, so let's take the dot product. We see that we get constants out front, i.e. the A omega over uh, square root of C squared plus A squared. And we see uh, the X components go to X components, Y to Y and Z to Z. Uh, which remarkably, uh, thanks to a couple cancellations and signs, go to zero. Clearly, z dotted with zero is zero, so we don't really care about that. And uh, but nonetheless, that this dot product equals zero makes our life quite interesting to deal with. Uh, so then that denominator goes to script r uh, times one once we plug in the dot product, which just gives us script r. Sure enough, what we see here now is that we have the uh, Scalar potential is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over script r. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Isn't that what we were expecting anyways? And now we see that the script r is just z squared over a, z squared plus a squared, so we're good to go. However, again, we have to evaluate things at their proper retarded time, and that would be tr equal t minus script r over c. Again, script r was z squared plus a squared over c. Why do we need that? We need that for the fact that AR was written as V, the velocity, over C squared times the uh, scalar potential. So with that, we know what TR is since we just defined it, and therefore we can define the scalar potential, or the vector potential rather, as, uh, as such. So we'll go ahead and plug everything in that we need to. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could get that C squared into a, a mu naught and an epsilon naught and cancel that epsilon. I got lazy and decided to just keep everything together so we could see what came from where. And uh, yeah, we're good to go with that one. That was a pretty fun one. And uh, just remember, when dealing with things traveling like this, always reference the retarded time TR.